In this video, I will demonstrate how to perform time series forecast using regression analysis in Excel. So we have this data set of smartphone sales. We have 16 quarters sales data and four quarter each year. So that's a total of four years data. And for each, uh, per for each quarter sales, so we have a period column contains the ID for each of the record from one to 16. So let's first plot it out in a line chart to see the pattern. So we insert a line chart and we can add a linear trend line. We can see that the trend is in general going up. We can also see some seasonality here. For example, the quarter two is the lowest and quarter four is the highest. And then that trend repeats for the next year. So let's create a regression model using the seasonality. So that is the quarter. First, we need to transform the quarter variable. That is because even though the quarter variable look like a numerical value, it's actually a categorical variable because it has four categories, quarter one, quarter two, quarter three, and quarter four. And for each quarter sales, that is each record, it's only true for one quarter. So for example, the first record for period one is quarter one. So that means for that record, the value for quarter two, three, and four will be zero. And then the second period is quarter two data. So for that record, quarter one is zero, quarter two is one, quarter three is zero, quarter four is zero, and so on. So you can see that this is a categorical variable. So we need to break them down into dummy variables. So first to convert the categorical variable into dummy variable, you can either manually code them or you can use tools like analytics solver to make the process faster. So here we're going to use the analytics solver. So highlight the data under data mining, select transform, select categorical data, create dummies. Select quarter and click OK. So what this does is that it creates a new worksheet called encoding. And in here we can see that the quarter one, two, three, four, each has become a separate um, dummy variable and in it only has the value one or zero. So for the first record, it's a quarter one data. So quarter one is one and quarter two, three, four is zero. In previous video, we talked about when we have K categories in the categorical variable, we only need K minus one dummy variables. That is to prevent the problem of multicollinearity. Multicollinearity refers to correlation between independent variables. If we have a lot of correlation between the independent variables, it will cause bias to our model and it will cause model overfit. So we want to only take three of these four quarters. We can just take any one for this demonstration. We'll take quarter one to three. That is to use the quarter four as the reference variable. We're not going to take its data. So we copy this, paste into our worksheet. Let's first create a regression model using just the seasonality. That is just the quarters. Under the data, click data analysis and select regression. Okay. And for the Y input, we want the cells. That is our dependent variable. And for the X, we want to select all three quarters. That's our independent variable. First row contains labels. And we want it to output over here. And we want to output residuals and residual plots. Click OK. We can see that we have a R square of 66%, which is not too bad. And we can see for the quarter one through three, we have coefficient in this uh, regression model. You may notice that the coefficient for quarter one through three are all negative. And why is that? It's because we used quarter four as the reference variable. And if you notice from the previous trend line that quarter four has the highest sales. So that is why all the other quarters referring to the quarter four will all appear to be negative. 
And we can also examine the p-value for the quarters, quarter one and two are less than 0.05, which means they're statistically significant to the regression model. And quarter three seems to be a little bit high. It's higher than the 0.05. Quarter three data is not significant. Theoretically, we can remove the quarter three from our regression model. And because the quarters are dummy variables, this means that we actually have three regression equations, one for each quarter. So for example, for quarter one, the regression equation would be sales equals to intercept 7.525 minus uh, 1.8 times one, right? So, and similarly for quarter two, it will be 7.525 minus 2.325. So now we have the equation model for the seasonality, but we would like to improve this regression model by adding the time period. So before doing that in Excel, we need the independent variable to be together. So I'm going to move the columns around a little bit so that I can highlight these columns together at one time. Under the data, data analysis, again, regression, click OK. So this time we have the same, so we have the same sales as the dependent variable or wide range. And we have the time period and all three quarters as the independent variable or X range and labels is are on the first row. We want it to output it over here. So we can see that our R square significantly improved to 97.6. It's a very good model. So that means our uh, adding the time period helped improve the model significantly. We see that we have a coefficient for the period and the p-value for the time period is very small, indicating that the time period is statistically significant to the dependent variable cells. The p-value for quarter one through three are also very small. So they contribute to the model as well. So in here, we can see that our regression model includes not only the seasonality, but also the time period trends. And it has become a much better model. So we still have three regression equations because of the quarters being dummy variable. So for quarter one, the regression equation will be y equal to the intercept 6.06 plus the coefficient for quarter one, which is negative 1.36, and plus the coefficient for period, which is 0 0.14 times the number of the period that you're trying to predict. So to summarize, we first created a seasonality regression analysis that only included the quarters as the independent variables. It is interesting to know that we could have obtained the quarterly forecasts for the next year by simply computing the average number of products sold in each quarter. Nonetheless, for more complex problem situations, such as dealing with a time series that has both trend and seasonal effects, this simple averaging approach will not work. So then we consider the situation for which the time series contains both seasonal effects and a linear trend. So we do this by adding the time period as another independent variable to predict the sales. So this time series also has a upward linear trend that we then accounted for in order to develop accurate forecasts of quarterly sales.